Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Kraus, and in this episode, we explore Charles Dickens's exceptional novel, Great Expectations. Great Expectations is one of Dickens's most famous novels, in part because of several famous film and television adaptations of it. It is also the story of a boy who becomes a young man trying to find love, as well as advancement into money, things that are eminently relatable to all readers. It deals specifically with Pip, a young boy who strikes it rich and has the opportunity to become an educated gentleman, the bumbling and stumbling Pip, who, in his ascent to greatness, enters the terrible world of social politics and grievance that dominates English high society. And as in so many of Dickens's great novels, Dickens is also providing commentary and a deconstruction of the high society that Pip is trying to aspire to enter. In this tale of a poor boy becoming spoiled aristocratic gentleman, or at least the want to be that, Dickens exposes the whores of English aristocratic life and is cautioning against the romantic idealization of the English upper class. There is no ideal for high society. Miss Havisham was cruelly abandoned on the altar of marriage and left to rot in her resentment, which ruined Estella and affected the originally innocent spirit of Pip, who becomes the target of the anti-male resentment of Havisham, which has also spoiled Estella. While characters like Herbert Pocket represent the more humane face of English high society, and there are always usually one or two good representatives of high society in Dickens's novels who embody the spirit of charity, kindness, compassion, and generosity, we also learn that his family, Herbert Pockets, isn't exactly the wealthiest among the aristocratic class. Likewise, the new moneyed class of professionals, the lawyers, jaggers, is the great example of what the new moneyed upper middle class resulting from the Industrial Revolution actually embody. They are also cruel and empty human beings. It is important to recognize that Victorian society was deeply religious in the mid-19th century. Jaggers's office is in the center of London, right next to the great and beautiful Cathedral of St. Paul's. If you have ever been to London, as I did, as I resided in London for a year during my graduate studies, St. Paul's Cathedral remains one of the dominant symbols and images of London. In the time of great expectations, St. Paul's Cathedral would have been the dominant image in London society. It is right next to Jaggers' office. Yet every time we approach Jaggers in the novel, St. Paul's is absent. This is a very subtle means by which Dickens is telling us of the cruel hollowness of lawyers and other industrial new men of money like Jaggers. They are cruel and empty human beings, simply concerned with themselves. Even though he is the mentor of young Pip, he really doesn't care about Pip's character and moral development. This also serves as a subtle and implicit Dickensian critique of the kind of people that the upper class and the new moneyed middle class are. They are people not concerned with moral and spiritual betterment and improvement. Throughout the maturation of Pip's character, Dickens is asserting that high society has only the concern of self-gain and revenge. 
and this has disastrous consequences on the soul and human life. The originally loving and charitable Pip, who we met at the beginning of the novel, becomes cold and callous by the middle of the novel. He turns away Joe. He turns away Joe, his friend and benefactor. He becomes a mirror of the cruel society he seeks to emulate and become part of. His desire for self-gain, self-advancement, and self-prestige has corrupted the charming, innocent young boy we were introduced to. Here, Dickens is also telling us something about the corrupting nature of society. Society makes people bad. Whether we agree with Dickens is beside the point here. That is what Dickens is telling us, and that is what is being communicated in Great Expectations. It is the shocking revelation of the kindness of Magwitch that shatters the illusion of Pip's dark desires, along with the eventual revelation of the tra tragedy of Miss Havisham, which leads to Pip's unsuccessful attempt to save her when she immolates herself in her sorrow, much to Pip's own regrets about how he acted toward others. In another episode covering Dickens, Bleak House, I said that Dickens asserts that knowledge of truth allows for reformation. That theme is also present here in Great Expectations. The knowledge of the truth of who Pip's benefactor is and the knowledge of the truth of the tragedy of Miss Havisham permit Pip to reform his life. Pip's confrontation with Orlick and Drummle, which is part of this reformation of Pip returning to being a good soul and a good individual represents the wrestling with his inner demons and the need to break away from the dark ghost that Orlick represents, his evil half, so to speak, his shadow that is following him just around the dark corner. We all have these dark demons that we must wrestle with. We must overcome them. Orlick, of course, even tries to kill Pip, but Pip is saved by his friends. Symbolically, this is the turning point for Pip, as through the knowledge of truth, the knowledge of truth about Magwitch and Havisham, and his overcoming of Orlick through the help of his friends, which represent the important spirit of friendship, compassion, and generosity that is what allows Pip to be reformed, to be made new. Through kindness, through love, through friendship, Pip's better side is nurtured and restored. The haughty young man is brought, bent and broken, into a better shape. While Estella says those lines at the end of the novel, in their concluding meeting, leaving an open ending as to whether they will have any future together, though that was not the original ending Dickens intended, that statement of being bent and broken into a better shape, though said by Estella, is explicitly applicable to Pip. We saw, over the course of the novel, Pip bent and broken throughout the story, and at the end, he has been brought into a better shape. We welcome Pip back into that family of joy and charity that he was originally, though we also know the innocence is gone forever. Losing innocence is in fact necessary as we grow older. We must come to learn the truth. We must come to learn the realities of society, the reality of the world that we live in. The world is not that innocent, bygone ideal that Pip had at the beginning of the novel. However, losing the kindness, the love, and the deep friendships that make life in this often bleak and hollow world, that life of love, kindness, and friendship, that meaningful life, that is something we should never lose. That is what Dickens is telling us. When we lose kindness, love, and friendship, we become one with the dark and cruel world, 
as Pip became at the middle portion of the novel. However, if we are able to keep, or in Pip's case, regain the kindness, love, and friendship that make life meaningful, we find beauty in the world, we find a world worth living in. Thus, even though we age, even though we lose our innocence, we must always retain that kindness, love, and spirit of friendship if we are to remain and even become great souls.